Hey guys, my name is Connor from the MC Spectrum, and today I'll be talking to you guys about the latest DLC for Battlefield 4, Second Assault. As most of you probably know, Second Assault brings back four fan-favorite maps from Battlefield 3. These maps include Gulf of Oman, Operation Firestorm, Caspian Border, and of course the classic Operation Metro. We also see the return of four weapons from previous Battlefield games, the Dow 12, F2000, M60 E4, AS Val, and the Gull Magnum. Personally, I've been enjoying Second Assault quite a bit. It's got the perfect balance of nostalgia and refreshment. The only thing I don't like about Second Assault is that it's trying to be Battlefield 3, which sometimes makes me remember just how great Battlefield 3 was compared to Battlefield 4. But I wouldn't like to stay negative about this DLC because I really want to appreciate that DICE is trying to keep us entertained. They understand that, the, that we definitely aren't 100% happy with Battlefield 4, and that's, that's incredibly obvious. Now I want to talk about each of the maps first. First off, let's talk about Gulf of Oman. I didn't play this map very much in BF3, but when I did, I had a really great time on it. It wasn't really the map that I could take seriously. I always had the urge to humiliate the campers on the sky skyscrapers. In Battlefield 4, it is returning with a sandstorm to spice things up a bit. Honestly, I quite like the feeling of moving through the city in the sandstorm, and it's sort of an unexpected feeling that I get, preparing myself for any enemies that might come out of nowhere. Moving on to Caspian Border, I really liked playing infantry on BF3 Caspian Border on Conquest Large. There was plenty of action at C and B flags in the forest for infantry, and around those were plenty of vehicle-based combat areas for you to enjoy. And honestly, I think it was just a flat-out beautiful map. One thing that was really annoying in the Battlefield 3 version was the radio tower in the corner of the map, which snipers just loved to sit on and take pot shots at people miles away. Usually they didn't get many kills on you just over there in the middle of nowhere. It was just sort of annoying to get suppressed by their shots being taken from a good 700 meters away. And at the end of the round this tower would collapse and it looked awesome. Caspian Border returns in Battlefield 4 with yet another tower. This time it is placed conveniently in the center of the map at the sea flag on Conquest Large. This time you can bring down the tower itself and there is actually an efficient way to get on top of the tower clear it out, and this is all via an elevator and a few sets of ladders. This map has a new look to it, sort of a dead grassy plain feeling, and it makes me personally feel like I'm in a proper war zone. Moving on to Operation Firestorm, it was, I was um, I was never a huge fan of this map in Battlefield 3, and I still am not a huge fan of it in Battlefield 4. It really had nothing special going for it in Battlefield 3 apart from yet another tower that people like to sit on and maybe a hill out in the middle of nowhere. But in Battlefield 4, it plays a little bit of a bigger role, allowing players to set the top on fire, burning anybody who dared to sit on top of there for too long. Really, the only thing Firestorm has going for it now is the amount of explosions you can create and the cool camo you can unlock for starting five fires from them. Honestly, I think this is the worst of all the maps, and it just feels lazy, honestly. I don't really think anyone truly loved this map in Battlefield 3, and I don't think anyone will in Battlefield 4. And now, on to Metro. I loved it in BF3. The choke points uh, were really a just point and kill fest if you could play them right. Some people complained about it and said that it was a pointless map that required no real skill, yet if you look at some of the still populated BF3 servers, there are plenty of players who are doing consistently well on 24-7 Metro. DICE thought that adding a few more flank routes and an elevator below the B flag would get rid of these choke points. Instead, they I think they just created more choke points but along with that, they brought a lot more action. In BF3, it was very cluttered and everyone was blocking and just taking as many kills as they possibly could with, uh, with no thought about their team. But one thing that you could always get was revives, heals, and ammo, just because uh, there were only two or three points where you could actually get some sort of action and everyone was sort of helping themselves to everything that they could get their hands on. Now in Battlefield 4, there's at least four or five points spreading out the action and making it a far more balanced map, in my opinion. Overall, I think that the map selection could have been better. Obviously, Metro needed to come back, and maybe Caspian, but Oman and Firestorm could have easily been replaced by something better. I think Demavan Peak would have been a great replacement for one of them, and Marquez Monolith or Azadi Palace from the Aftermath DLC for the other. Those were some of my favorite maps in BF3. Many people will argue that Noshar Canals should have come back since it was obviously THE fan favorite map from Battlefield 3 among the more majority of players. And there's always 
someone who was just looking for the classic Battlefield 3 infantry action who could just join a 24-7 Noshar server and just have a blast. I agree this map should have been in there if they were going for the fan favorite maps from BF3, but I don't think it would work out. In BF3 there were a select few maps which people played on, and the map rotation was very limited. In BF3, in BF4, I think it's best being spread out among all the maps, not focusing on one team deathmatch map. Now on to the weapons. The M60, Dow 12, F2000, AS Val, and Goal. Starting with the F2000, I feel like this gun was great in Battlefield 3, but was just ruined in BF4. In BF3 it was very well balanced, it had a fast fire rate, high recoil, slow reload, and this gun was a very average close quarters gun, and was very popular among many people. In Battlefield 4 it has a fast fire rate and somewhat controllable recoil, but due to its insanely slow reload speed, it seems to not perform very well in close quarters along with its low damage output, making it kind of a pointless gun. The AEK seems to do everything the F2000 does, but better. The M60 was a very fun gun in Battlefield 3 with the right attachments and burst fired. This gun could become a laser beam. Honestly, I have not tried it out in BF4 yet, but I'm happy to see it's back in the game and I think this gun was a great pick for second assault. Um, Dow 12. I hate this gun. End of story. Put it down. Now. The ASVAL is a very interesting gun. It has a high fire rate accompanied with an expected high recoil, but also it has really good reload speeds and a great hip fire spread. This gun is good, but not at any sort of range. And finally, the Gold Magnum. I was extremely excited to see this new bolt action put into Battlefield 4 because honestly, I don't like any of them in BF4, any of the vanilla Battlefield 4 snipers. All of them don't have a very good feel to them, in my opinion, but the goal? Wow. It has the same damage model of the 338 Recon, range of the M40, and the fire rate of the Scout Elite. The only bad thing about this gun is that it has a somewhat small magazine size of 5 bullets with 6 in the chamber, but really, I think it just. I don't know, with a great reload speed, you shouldn't have to use any more than 4 bullets, get that quick reload, and just continue tearing people to pieces. I'm already at 300 kills with the gold magnum and counted, I just can't stop using this amazing gun. Overall, I think this was a good DLC from DICE, and it definitely wasn't a flop like China Rising was. Personally, I'm really excited for Naval Strike. There are so many new things to look forward to, brand new weapons, water-based combat, the return of Titan mode, and more. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, it was my first video on Madden Stem's channel, so a like rating would really brew great. Subscribe for more videos like this one, and I will see you guys later. Take it easy.